cleared the maths. And it turns out that I've been buying luxury for about the last 12 years. Even back when I probably shouldn't have been buying it. I was. Uh, we, can talk, we can talk about that and have a whole discussion about priorities another time. But that is the fact of the matter. I've been in love and uh, passionate about this ridiculous stuff for a long time. I've even managed to, if one can call this a career, forge some sort of career out of it. But this is all to say that I feel as though I have a decent amount of experience. I've learned many a lesson on this journey that I wish to share with you today. Maybe you're starting your journey into luxury, maybe you're still sort of finding your feet and all of that. Hopefully the tips that I share with you today, maybe you're even far along in your journey, but I maybe say something today and you're like, I hope that I can share some cheat codes, okay? I hope. I hope that I can share some cheat codes. I hope that I can share essentially the mother load to the Sims. Uh, if you're a Sims player, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, guys, if you're new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head out there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> <laughs> Never. The first lesson is the power of an essay. Arguably the most important lesson learned is that having a sales associate, having a good sales associate, can really make or break your experience when it comes to luxury fashion. I wish that I could sit here and tell you that service is consistent across luxury stores, even within the same brand. Um, some brands are much more better at being consistent with their level of customer service and, you know, what to expect from an essay when you go in there. And others are not so great. But having an essay can really ensure that you have the best level of customer service and the best experience whenever you are shopping, be that distance shopping, be that in store. This experience can include access to pre-orders, the ability to order something before it officially launches so that you make sure you get your hands on it if it's something that you really want. I'm gonna come back to this point actually later on in the video. Um, it can also be just making sure that you have that sort of hyped up luxury experience whenever you're in store. You get offered drinks, maybe even a small biscuity little snack. I don't know what it is, but it does kind of elevate the experience and make it feel special and it should feel special. Access to sales. A lot of luxury brands, I'm talking brands like Dior, Chanel, Louis Vuitton doesn't ever do sales, um, but Fendi, maybe even, if you have an essay, you will get told about, okay, these are our seasonal sales, this is the lookbook that's going to be included, blah, 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 but only if you have an essay. This is not something that they sort of widely promote to, you know, a transactional customer that comes in and doesn't have a relationship with the brand or whatever. VIC client perks, and this doesn't, okay, so VIC is very important client, okay, and usually this means that you're spending a lot, and those perks can include getting invited to the runway shows, it can also be getting a little Christmas present from the brand. But sometimes it's not even about your spend. Sometimes it's just if you have a really good relationship with your essay and they really like you, they might, you know, pop you in for a perk every now and again. There is even, okay, and I'm sure this isn't, you know, an official thing that everybody goes and, and talks about, but even sort of bending the rules a little bit with returns. I'm going to get back onto returns policies. Waiving fees for alterations, if there's no free alteration service. Aftercare services, if some if you bought something and something goes wrong within a certain amount of time, if you have a good SA, they might just be like, oh my gosh, this shouldn't be happening, let's get your replacement, or let's get that sent off to be fixed, and I'm going to waive the fee. So there definitely are benefits to having a singular point of contact that you work with time and time again. Now, but I don't think that you should go out and like for every brand that you may possibly buy from go and find an essay at each though if that's how you want to spend your time that's not up to me but I would definitely say for maybe your top three brands that you consistently buy from or are hoping to consistently buy from and by consistently I don't mean like you're in there every month I mean maybe like two times a year three times a year something like that there are department stores who have sort of multi-brand essays who can you know whatever is in the store they can basically help you with so it is definitely worth honing in on the brands that you're bothered about the most know the policies going back to returns policies a lot of luxury brands 
do have normal returns policies and by that I mean you buy the item within 30 days if you decide that you hate it or it doesn't fit or whatever else and the tags are still on you can take it back you get your original payment method back on a card whatever cash some brands Chanel is one of these they don't do returns they only do exchange or store credit so you buy a $10,000 bag you go and you decide actually I'm not bothered about said bag I haven't even used it blah blah, blah. you return it they will give you store credit and so you can spend that 10 grand again at Chanel in any which way you want but you can't get your original payment method back that's the last I knew of Chanel I don't know if things have changed recently but I don't think they have but it is worth knowing or asking if you're unsure about the returns policy if it is a gift for somebody if you've not bought with them before if you're not 100% about the purchase and you're like oh I could see myself changing my mind on this it's always worth knowing the rumors are 95% true what do I mean by this with uh, the rise of the internet and social media it means that information is being spread faster we're getting access to information that we didn't use to before so when rumors are going around about price increases most of the time those tend to be true most of the time the internet knows before the essays and so timing is everything there have been a lot of um a lot more frequent price increases than there used to be in recent years and the increases are not small this is not an extra 50 quid on the price of a bag this is 500 750 like these are decision making increases and when all of these sort of rumors are circling and all of that the majority of the time they are true so if you can buy and you have the means to be able to buy before a price increase do you will always regret waiting after the price increase and like i said these are not small price increases i remember with my mermaid um classic flap I think it was £3,700 and after the price increase it was 4100 If this bag had had a four in front of it when I was buying it, I wouldn't have thought of it because I was like, no, like four was my, like, I'm not going into the 4000 category with this bag, right? Things like that. If you are seeing natterings on the internet and you are able to pull the trigger, pre-order if you can. I think again in more recent years, as stuff has become much there's there's more collaborations there's more capsule collections things of you know very limited edition the word is around a lot and everything it can be quite hard to get your hands on very specific items or collections or whatever so if you have the ability to pre-order for things that you know you want don't bother about pre-ordering if you're like oh yeah i think it's nice you need to be 100 percent because make sure that you're locking that in um, I know when the first Pharrell collection dropped for Louis Vuitton not that long ago I know in Paris all of the like don't even bother you're not getting your hands on the leather speedy the majority of those went in pre-order that's the other thing for a lot of like super coveted pieces a lot of them are being sold out in pre-orders so by the time you go into store your chances uh -huh, right scrape in the barrel in order to get access to pre-orders ask your essay even if you don't have an essay and let's say that you know you've seen a bag on a runway and you're like i need this bag i would strongly urge you to go in store and just the first essay that talks to you just go hi super super interested in this bag can i have your contact and, and can you let me know when the pre-order is open because i need this piece or whatever the other thing with pre-orders depends on the brand also depends on how like highly coveted the collection is some of them you can pay 50% at the time that you pre-order and 50% upon collection so I don't know it feels like a little bit of Klarna it feels like spreading the payments it doesn't feel as bad <laughs> to the wallet <laughs> some of them it's like you pre-order and you pay your whole money up front and then it's free when it arrives as per girl math you know I don't rate the rules but it's like oh my gosh a gift from the brand what have I done to deserve this I'm joking but pre-ordering if you can it definitely has its benefits travel shop smart knowing where to shop and planning for that shopping is key in today's day and age fail to prepare and prepare to fail is a quote that my latin teacher in school used to drill into us all the time and i mean listen to this day it's there but this is very true for this situation as we know paris at the moment is probably the best place to buy luxury full stop 
they have range. The collections, like, you are going to see more in stores there than you will see pretty much anywhere else. There's like 27 Louis Vuitton, there's maybe not, but there's lots. There's lots of range, there's lots of shops. If you're going to find something, it's going to be there. It tends to be cheaper to buy from home countries or as close to home country as possible. So if you're wanting to buy a French brand, the cheapest place to get it is going to be France. It's already cheaper to buy the items in France. And then on top of that, if you are not in the European Union or in the US or, you know, in Asia or anywhere outside of the European Union, you get tax refund. Uh, in most places it's 12%, I know Chanel does 13% for some odd reason, like, oh my gosh, why are you being generous? But anyway, so you're already getting it cheaper and then you get a refund. It's like, it's a really, really glorious shopping experience. <laughs> so if you know you are going to go to France, Europe, closer to the home country of the brand, do not bother spending your money on that brand if it's something that you can wait for. The other thing though, if there is something very specific that you want, you can call up and ask. If there was a specific uh, piece that I was after, I would call up, let's say I was going to Paris, right? I'd call up one of the stores and go, hi, can you help me? I really, really want this piece. I'm traveling in two weeks. Um, is there, you know, an abundance of availability? Can I put it on hold? All of that. You can ask for the person's contact in order to kind of have that conversation. You can do that to make sure that those pieces are ready and waiting and you've got a good chance of getting it. The other thing is, let's say you're not even going to Paris, but you are flying through Charles de Gaulle Airport. Well, let me tell you, you can still shop there and get your 12% off. Also, if we're talking about within the US, Hawaii has the cheapest luxury items compared to mainland US. This varies by brand, the percentage varies by brand. Some brands participate, some don't. It's a, it's a special pricing zone, don't know what that means. But some examples, by the way, there is a full breakdown on the luxurylowdown.com. They've got a great list of all of the brands and the percentages that they give and on what. But for example, Bottega Veneta is pretty much 10% off across the board compared to normal US pricing. Um, Dior is 5 to 11%, Fendi 10 to 20% off leather goods, Gucci sort of similar. So it varies by brand. Another thing, you know, that I've learned the hard way and uh, we don't live in a perfect world is that not everything that is luxury luxury is good quality. I think again as we have these conversations on social media and we're able to like show and share experiences and all of that, we are becoming much more privy to the brands that have a lot of quality issues and the brands that don't. And again this varies by personal experience, sometimes it can even vary by where the item was made, where you bought the item, all of this business, right? There's no cut and dry answer. We've heard of Chanel wonky flaps, we've heard of Goyard canvas ripping because it's much thinner than something like the Louis Vuitton coated canvas, you know? So there's, there's, there's a lot of variation across brands. Some brands are just known for having great quality. Bottega, Loewe, Hermes, Gucci is great across the board, Ferragamo, you know, there's a lot of brands that do really have great quality and do have really great customer service to kind of back that up and the brands that sort of don't. So it's worth doing your research, it's worth if you can going in and touching and interacting with the products so that you know what you like and what you're looking for and I know that that's not something that everybody can do with where you live and, and things like that but don't assume that because something is expensive um, that it is better quality. My final lesson is points mean prizes. What do I mean by this? Now, as we know, when it comes to luxury shopping, you've really got sort of two avenues to do this by, right? And that's not sort of in-store and online, but that's true. But it's sort of, do you go direct to boutique or do you go to multi-brand retailers slash department stores? And whilst there are pros and cons to both, a very big pro for the department stores are that a lot of department stores across the world have loyalty schemes, um, promotions, etc, etc, that going direct to store does not have. And the ability to spend points. So, for example, um, a lot of kind of American department stores a few times during the year, actually quite often, like Bergdorf and Saks do this, a sort of spend more, save more. So if you spend X amount, you get 20% off. If you spend more than that, you get 30% off and so on and so forth, right? Not all luxury brands are included in this, but quite a decent amount are. They also do, like, if you spend 
$1,500 will give you a $150 gift card, right? That then you can take off your next purchase and that does tend to work across brands. Harrods have their Harrods loyalty scheme. So the more you spend at Harrods, you get a number of points. You can convert those points into cash that you can spend across brands at Harrods. Yes, including Chanel. They also allow you for like birthdays and special days, 10% days. Not all brands are included, but the majority of them are. So you can go, oh, I'm about to make a big purchase. I know the brand accepts a 10% day. Let me log in my 10% day so I get a nice little 10% off. The other thing are Amex points. I have become a big Amex girl for the last, I would say, two years. She is racking up them points. And my main thing used to be to convert it into air miles so then I can get cheaper flights, whatever, upgrades and all of that business. However, I also have recently realised that you can convert points into department store gift cards. So I can convert like, you know, a um, thousand dollars, a couple of thousand dollars or whatever into a Saks gift card, a Bergdorf gift card and all of that. And the gift cards work across brands. Listen, I am not here for financial advice. That's a personal decision that you make. I'm not on the hook for that. Don't you dare, please. I've not always made the best decisions. <laughs> but um, that's also something that is a way that, I, you know, it just feels good. Why not? If I can spend some points that, fair enough, I've gained from spending money, but in a, in a roundabout way, in a girl math way, I've got a discount. That was free. Why not? So that's something that I've definitely learned more recently. This is a new lesson and I'm happy to share and I hope that my lessons have been of use. Um, let me know if you have any lessons or any tips and tricks down below in the comments. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.